Good morning, everyone. I'm thankful for the opportunity to share with you at this year's SPP conference some ideas on how we as a community of physicists and physics teachers and mentors can make um, physics, our subject that we love, uh, less intimidating. I think it won't come as a surprise to most of us that um, that that physics is an intimidating subject uh, for many, many people, uh, many, many Filipinos. Uh, so when I was uh, to, to do research for this topic, uh, I asked my Facebook friends to share some uh, stories, their experiences of learning physics in school. And indeed, I got many comments um, that uh, reflect that experience that physics is difficult and intimidating. So I'm going to share with you some of them here. Um, these two comments are saying they spent so much time solving problems when physics lies in everyday life. You know, and that uh, they wish that this was brought down to that level more. So there's this um, uh, recognition that there's a disconnect between what how physics is taught uh, in school and what we now know physics is. You know that physics is actually explains everything uh, around us. So um, nasasayangan sila or they could have taken uh, that opportunity to have that. Uh, appreciation even uh, early in, in school. Um, another uh, comment is that physics is difficult because it's so abstract and it's intimidating for people who don't necessarily you know love uh, math or, or numbers and equations like maybe some of us did uh, uh, as, as young as young students um, it may be also not all right so and there's this recognition that Numbers and foreign variables can actually easy scare, easily scare students away. You know, our uh, letters, uh, symbols, and Greek alphabets that are uh, very actually foreign um, need to be um, more gently introduced um, because uh, otherwise um, it will scare or it can scare or turn, uh, turn off uh, learners. Um, again, I don't think this, uh, this would come as a surprise to us, uh, but this just validates um, this um, notion. Um, on the other hand, um, it's also, um, it was also uh, good that many commenters um, pointed to very memorable positive experiences. So, um, and these are some of them. Um, my physics teacher used a working model rocket. Uh, and then the second one, the second uh, memory is that I was asked to push a chair uh, vertically while the instructor pushed it horizontally. And it was my uh, first physics lesson on vector forces. And even without uh, drawing anything on the blackboard, uh, I, I got the concept and I never forgot. So here we can see how um, physics lessons uh, can actually make a lifelong impact to, to learners. Um, here are more examples, um, again, uh, relating to examples that really connected and really stayed with uh, the, the person. Um, water from a hose, um, a wind being channeled inside a house during a storm um, for Bernoulli's equation. And, and then this general comment that it's really the demonstrations that the teachers did or that the students did themselves that stays um, even long after uh, the class. And so this struck me uh, and putting it together, it's related to, the, it's related to this concept, this um, um, mantra for teaching uh, that's been shared with me called start with the world so this is this flips the traditional sequence of teaching where you start with a lesson with a lecture and maybe do an experiment to demonstrate it the, the lesson uh, ask the students to reflect and then only finally get the students to apply it through a project um, and so 
this sequence actually ends with the world. No? Um, but physics is actually all around us, maybe abstract, but it describes the real world. So it can actually be connected to the world of the learner um, from the start. Um, and one um, key concept here uh, that was also introduced to me recently is this concept of using realia. So these are essentially just real world objects uh, that facilitate learning and interaction. And, and there are many levels of um, realia. You have um, the actual object. Um, and in that example, we have the chair, you know, the actual uh, uh, chair in front of you that you can touch, that you can push, uh, that experiences the force um, that you're studying in physics. Uh, if you don't have the actual object itself, it can be a replica of the object or scale model. The next level would be a video, and then a photograph. Uh, and then the lowest levels are drawings, which is actually what we do uh, a lot in physics, right? Uh, we draw um, simple figures. Uh, and then finally, you can have a written description. But the point here is that um, we should not take for granted that the higher the level, the higher the engagement. So even as simple as, as, simple as introducing um, um, a real physical object or scale model or video or photograph of something before, uh, before putting it uh, as a simplified diagram uh, can actually uh, provoke, uh, will actually provoke the learners and start the learning process uh, very naturally. Um, so the core idea behind um, Science's um, knowledge channel um, program, which I'm involved in as host and as a, a co-writer, uh, is centered on on this, on on using uh, real um, well, real objects, simple objects, to do fun and easy experiments uh, to demonstrate science concepts. So here. I'm just showing some examples for static electricity. You just need the aluminum can, right? The pipe and the towel. You rub it, um, the pipe with the towel. And you can actually see the can uh, move even without touching, uh, without touching it. So classic experiment, uh, but it's really different if you just describe it versus if you actually, uh, actually do it yourself or if you can show a video uh, of it. Uh, and, and encourage the students to do it themselves, maybe at home uh, in, this, in this case. Uh, just going through this quickly, we have uh, an example of refraction. Uh, and then uh, finally, this, uh, uh, see, this demonstration of surface tension where you um, have a paper clip um, floating on top of the uh, water. And then you place uh, just a smidge of dishwashing liquid, uh, and guess what will happen? You know, and it really provides that uh, aha moment um, and starts the the, the process of uh, you know curiosity of why that happened, and that's when you uh, introduce the the scientific concept. So there are um, many now many of these videos, and we're uploading them. Uh, new episodes weekly on the Knowledge Channel's Facebook and YouTube uh, pages. So that's the first thing I wanted to share, uh, the idea of starting with the world and using um, as much as possible real world objects when we teach uh, and introduce physics concepts. The second one is this, um, again, a mantra from uh, progressive learning is to create love for the subject. So I pose the question, what if this was our primary goal as teachers? Uh, not to, not to um, drill students with new knowledge or to how to solve problems, but really to create love for the subject that we love. Um, um, some observations, if we have this very sole focus on problem solving, it will actually lead to it actually leads to feelings of failure and inadequacy, so very negative emotions for students who are not adept at this very particular set of technical skills. Um, so it's an invitation to rethink assessment. Uh, so there's a recognition of uh, not just mastery, but 
an appreciation and understanding of the concepts uh, and even narrating uh, and explaining how they understood them. Uh, further questions would be um, with the way we teach the subject, how many would be scientists have we actually turned away from the field you know, um, because of these negative, um, negative emotions? And, um, and related to that, how many future professionals you know, and uh, citizens have we made averse to science even without meaning to, again, because of these uh, negative uh, emotions that, that stay with them um, through their lives? Um, so in my own uh, way, I'm spreading the love for physics through these video explainers uh, on YouTube where I answer frequently asked questions about science uh, in Filipino, uh, in, ta in, in the vernacular. So I've chosen very um, popular um, questions, questions that really come from, uh, from young people uh, that I've gotten over the years about time travel, aliens, uh, parallel universes. And these are questions that I also had myself. Um, and I also take this opportunity to introduce concepts in quantum mechanics, the many worlds, um, general relativity, gravitational time dilation, in this case, and electromagnetic spectrum. No, bakit tayo nakakita ng iba't ibang kulay? So sharing here just some um, examples. So in this time dilation video, the question actually came from a comment, uh, someone who comment, commented on, a, uh, on the channel. Uh, and the question was, how does time dilation affect biological aging? And so here I introduced the concept of time dilation, gravitational time dilation, and used uh, an exa uh, Baguio versus Metro Manila uh, as an example. Uh, and so this commenter also uh, responded to the video uh, saying that she's now more interested to dig deeper about general relativity. So uh, for me, for, for me, this is uh, uh, achieving the objective that is just um, 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 cultivating the love for the subject in, uh, in these young uh, aspiring you know, scientists. Um, and this is my latest video and I'll just share so far my uh, best comment so far is this person post his anime for this and it was worth it. So I uh, hope you could also check this out and share it with your uh, students and the young people who are um, you know, interested in, you know, curious about the world. Uh, and of course, physics is part of how we um, uh, understand the world um, better. Um, so I'll just leave you with this. Um, again, people who shared on my Facebook ab about, you know, about uh, their uh, lifelong love for physics was sparked by their um, experiences in school, in high school in particular. Uh, and so when they really enjoyed physics, they ended up, uh, you know, pursuing it. And that's awe and wonder from these um, experiences as stays with the person really uh, throughout their lives. Um, and this final comment uh, is actually uh, from an ophthalmologist. So he absolutely loved physics. Uh, uh, the, their teacher really uh, sparked that joy uh, and uh, appreciation in him. And now as an ophthalmologist, um, so he didn't pursue physics per se, but now he's a professional you know, ophthalmologist and also, he's a teacher, so he teaches light and optical physics to residents of ophthalmology. Um, so uh, I leave us with this um, reminder of uh, how far-ranging uh, the impact of our um, of our uh, teaching goes, and um, if we number one uh, try to start more with the world and introduce. Um, physics um, in a way that relates to the world of our learners. And number two, if we approach our teaching of the subject as uh, with the goal of creating love for physics in all of our students, I think it can go a long way to making um, physics less intimidating and uh, 
having more Filipinos appreciate and love science uh, as they uh, grow up and maybe even uh, encourage more uh, young Filipinos to go into physics uh, and join us, uh, join our uh, community. So I just uh, want to acknowledge everyone who shared in my, in my Facebook post and my YouTube videos uh, and of course the Sciences team at Knowledge Channel and special mention to Mikey Cuento who's a, a high school teacher in a progressive school that shared these uh, very um, helpful ideas with me. Thank you very much and I look forward to uh, your questions. <laughs>